Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters. This is a very powerful reminder from our beloved Sheikh Mufti Menk on Eid al Adha, mentioning how our Prophet Ibrahim became a close friend of Allah by following Allah's instruction without questioning. So, Allah gave us a day to remember him and we should cut off our bad habits remembering the dedication of Ibrahim والسلام, to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We Muslims should be proud and grateful for having such a beautiful day from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we can celebrate the day with every walk of life by sharing our sacrificed animals for a greater purpose as it is all about the sacrifice and submission. Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, is the father of Muslim nation and he set a wonderful example for a true believer man female to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's instruction at any circumstances happily to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us closeness to him and consider us too as a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's sacrifice for the sake of Allah. This is really eye-opening reminders that when Mufti Menk spoke about everything you do, your actions, whatever you do, your words, your movements, all of that. Ask yourself, when I meet with Allah, I am going to be shown this action. Will I be proud of it? Wallahi, it really touched my heart. And Mufti Menk highlights the problems of age, how we use our social media, how we behave with our family members. Please brothers and sisters, listen carefully. Mufti Menk makes mention of two challenges which take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which are those challenges? You will find out more about these challenges in this video clip. At last, I want to say, as we are writing the book of our deeds, which would be placed on the day of judgment, we should write it well. Let's listen to our beloved Mufti Mank now. Sajatullah Khai. My beloved brothers and sisters, I commence by congratulating you upon this beautiful day of Eid, which is also a Friday. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this great opportunity. And I remind yourselves and myself that this Eid is all about the sacrifice and the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. When Allah instructed him to do something, he did it without questioning. That pleased Allah so much that Allah gave us a day where we can remember that sacrifice and also consider it a very happy occasion. This would mean that every time Allah has instructed us to do something, we should be doing that without questioning Allah. It is not befitting for a true believer, male or female, that when Allah or his messenger, may peace be upon him, have declared or instructed something that they feel they have a choice in that regard. Which means the true believers always know that when Allah has instructed you or the messenger has instructed you something, you will adopt it and immediately do as you are told without questioning. That is a true believer. This was done by the Prophet Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, may peace be on him. And for that reason, Allah loved him so much. Allah has indeed taken and considered Ibrahim a very close friend of his. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us closeness to him and consider us too friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, my sisters, what we need to realize is this is all about the sacrifice and submission not just of Ibrahim alayhi salam, of every one of us. Are you prepared to sacrifice for the sake of Allah? If the answer is yes, then you indeed deserve this day of sacrifice, this day of rejoice of the sacrifice.
you have reason to rejoice because you have sacrificed. Many of us cannot sacrifice our sleep for the sake of Allah to fulfill Salatul Fajr. Please do better. You can do better. My brothers and sisters, you will be questioned about your prayers. The hadith says one of the first things that a worshipper will be asked about on the day that he leaves this world is the prayer. If that is okay, everything else will be okay. And if that is not okay, everything else will not be okay. So that's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. My brothers and sisters, let's sacrifice for the sake of Allah. Let's take a look at the instructions that Allah has given us. He has told us what to do and what not to do. From among the things he has told us, he says, don't ever associate partners with me. So make it your business to think about everything you do. Have I associated partners with Allah? The answer should be no. If you don't know, ask those with knowledge. Ask those with knowledge. If you don't know, they will guide you. They will tell you, subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, the worst thing one could do is associate partners with Allah. Allah tells you, don't do that. Learn to sacrifice solely and only for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any act of worship we render should be for the sake of Allah. That would primarily be the main act of worship that would make us deserve paradise when we've worshipped Allah alone. Allah says, if a person dies and they have associated partners with Allah and they've not sought forgiveness from that, then Allah says, Allah will never forgive the association of partnership with him but he will forgive any other sins that have been committed, whatever he wishes, if a person dies and has not yet repented. Subhanallah. So if you repent from shirk, you will be forgiven. But if you haven't repented, then Allah says, I don't want to forgive that sin. I don't mind forgiving anything else that you haven't sought forgiveness from. But this one, no. That is a stern warning from Allah. It's something we need to be conscious of, my brothers and sisters. I want to draw your attention to things that are happening in our midst nowadays that people take for granted and they don't realize that they need to do better in order to display their obedience to Allah. I start off by saying everything you do, your actions, whatever you do, your words, your movements, all of that. Ask yourself, when I meet with Allah, I'm going to be shown this action. Will I be proud of it? Whatever you've done. When you meet with Allah, he's going to show you everything. On the day when the book is spread, when the book is placed, the book of deeds, your deeds is placed. You find the criminals, Al-Mujrimeen, the criminals. What will they be saying? What is up with this book? It has not left a single small deed or a big deed, except that it is in the book, counted. It's there. Allah says, be careful. You are writing your book, write it well, subhanAllah. A lot of seeking of forgiveness or repentance would be very beneficial for you. But whatever you do or say, always ask yourself before you say or do those things. Will I be proud of this act on the day of judgment? Brothers and sisters, I wish to highlight the problem of the age. The use of social media. The way we're using social media at times, we tend to forget I have a Lord to answer to. I have a day of judgment that I'm going to go to. All these deeds are going to be shown to me. Whatever I've said, whatever I act, we find people, subhanAllah, who are otherwise really good becoming forgetful of this. It's shaitan's way. Indeed, it is shaitan. None has made me forget this except shaitan. That's why I forgot it. So we say the same people are good, but shaitan makes us forget that everything we do on our phones, on social media, whatever the app may be, we're going to be answerable to Allah. This is the day of sacrifice, sacrifice the bad words.
the evil songs. People ask about what's the ruling on music. It would be embarrassing to say anything besides stay away simply because if you take the music out of the equation and only have the lyrics, the lyrics have the worst swear words that religious people are now lip syncing and mimicking and those swear words swearing your own mother and thinking that it's okay when Allah shows you those words because you mimicked them or you said them. Will you be okay? And we're still arguing about whether music is okay or not. The music industry, let's face it, my brothers and sisters, the words that are used are so embarrassing. You don't have to be a Muslim to recognize that these words are becoming more and more immoral, such that they are becoming embarrassing for anyone who has an iota of faith in Allah, anyone who has an iota of concern of the meeting with Allah, anyone who believes in the sacrifice of Allah, it would become a total embarrassment. But like I said, it's not only the believers. Even the disbelievers, those who don't believe or those of other faiths, the Jews, the Christians and others, they are all crying foul at the moment saying, what is going on with these dirty, bad words? It's becoming worse and people are pushing the levels of morality to degrees that they consider okay, yet it is the height of immorality. Swearing your own mother just by saying, subhanallah, may Allah forgive us. And I'm going to give you a real life example. People bought in a house. Subhanallah, I heard a young man, a good Muslim, lip sync to a song, Astaghfirullah. I probably would have had to wash my ears after that. Just because he was bought in a house. A'udhu Billah. What on earth did he swear his mother for? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. La ilaha illallah. Where are we heading? Today is the day of sacrifice. Cut that out. Ibrahim alayhi salam cut something else for the sake of Allah. He put a knife to it. Put a knife to these bad habits. You don't need to swear your mother. You don't need to use the F word, the B word, the P word, the D word, the Z word, the X word, whatever those bad words are and they're becoming more and more, you do not need to participate in that. You're a believer. Allah is going to show you your phone. He's going to show you what you've done, what you've said. You'd rather delete it. Brothers and sisters, today is the day of deleting. Please go to your social media and delete all those videos or messages or any form of communication, actions, whatever it may be that would be embarrassing in front of Allah when Allah shows you those deeds and says, why did you do this? Can you answer to this or that? We told you to stay away from immorality, from vulgar words, from behavior that's unacceptable. Please, my brothers and sisters, I invite you to sacrifice not your son like the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, was instructed, but your own bad deeds. It's not too late. You still have your phones. Please take a moment to pick up the phone right now and to delete everything that you would be embarrassed with on the Day of Judgment. Imagine the Prophet going through your phone or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking record of you in your presence. And we don't want ourselves to be given our books on the wrong side. My brothers and sisters, do you really consider this a day of Eid? Do you really consider the 10th of Dhul Hijjah a day of Eid? Do you really believe in the story of the Prophet Ibrahim and the sacrifice of his son Ismail, may peace be upon them? Do you really believe that this is a day that we should be rejoicing because of the sacrifice and submission of those great men and women? Subhanallah. If that is the case, it's about time we submitted and we sacrificed. And I say the problem of the age is people are still arguing about music and they're saying it's okay, not realizing that even if you were to remove the music from the equation and only look at how filthy and dirty the lyrics have become, it does not require a believer to admit that. May Allah forgive us. So this is why I say, wouldn't you like your book to be filled with recitation of the Quran, the listening of the various reciters, knowing the names of people, the amount of effort that people have put to mimic others on TikTok and on Instagram and various other apps, the amount of effort they put there 
if they were to put one tenth of that effort in the Quran, I promise you they probably would become very, very close friends of Allah. I promise you they would master the Quran. I promise you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Quran. Allah has raised through the Quran certain people and certain people have been dropped by the same Quran. The reason is the Quran gives you reminders, but you don't take heed. Subhanallah, when I have been told how much effort people make to try and learn a move, how to shake their waist or their bosoms or whatever else it may be in front of a camera to look such that people can like what they've done. It was disliked by Allah. No matter how many millions of people might have liked a silly thing that you did, if it was immoral and filled with low values that was disliked by Allah, you've actually lost. It was not a gain. I'd rather have no one follow me. I'd rather have zero likes. I'd rather turn off or delete my apps if I, if I cannot control myself than to earn the dislike of Allah. Life is so short lived. People are dying every single day. More so during this time of coronavirus. We need to be careful, my brothers and sisters. These are the days we need to ask ourselves, what am I going to sacrifice for Allah? Come on, put a knife to your bad habits. Become more conscious of what you're doing. Why do we have to behave in a silly way? Imagine, like I said, the effort people make to learn a dance in order to shake their bodies in front of a screen. And what do they say? Mimicking words of someone, the, th the dirtiest and filthiest of words and the challenges of today are such that people just have to challenge you to remove your pants and it's gone. You do it because subhanallah, billah, you just want to live up to a challenge that was made to you by someone who's not even considered a moral person who has any values, who stands for anything, who doesn't even believe in the hereafter. And Allah has challenged you to fulfill your five salah. You will never do that. Why? Because the people will not see it. Who's going to like all of that? Astaghfirullah. I hope that's not the case. I hope what I've just said is not the case. I hope we take Allah up on the challenge of five salah a day. I hope we take Allah up on the challenge of dressing appropriately. I hope we take Allah up on the challenge of saying good words. I hope we take Allah up on the challenge of developing your character and conduct, helping the elderly, being the best to your wife or your husband, your spouse, your children, your family members, your parents, your uncles, your aunts, your in-laws, your nephews, your nieces. I hope you take up the challenge of Allah about the will qurba, your relatives. I hope you take up the challenge of Allah about solving your problems and your disputes. I hope you take up the challenge of Allah about communicating with people in a good way, making them feel good. I hope you take up the challenge of Allah about smiling. These are the true challenges. I hope you take up the challenge of Allah about fulfilling the duties you have unto him. Subhanallah. We've become people who need reminder upon reminder. I remember when I was young reading the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and as he blew into his flute or as he played his music, everyone followed. The little children followed completely. It started off the first time with the rodents following. The second time, all the children followed totally blindly until he took them to their destruction. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, if I learned a lesson from that when I was a kid, it was all about how a day will come when shaitan will also blow that flute and he will also play that music. And what will we do? We will follow like rodents. We will follow like rats. Are we not doing that? Subhanallah. We're just following anything and everything without thinking whether it is moral, whether it is okay, whether it is something I'm going to be proud of in front of the messenger, peace be upon him, claiming to be the follower of Allah and his messenger. And what do we do? Would I be proud about that on the day of judgment? Is it going to help me in the hereafter? The short life is very short. Come on, my brothers. Come on, my sisters. The reminder is for me and then for all of you. I want to remind myself and yourselves to be more responsible when it comes to social media. I do believe it is a platform through which you can earn a lot of good deeds. Mashallah, you can do a lot of good, but let's be disciplined. This Eid is definitely all about the sacrifice. Are we going to sacrifice for the sake of Allah? Let's improve on our dress code, men and women, both.
not just one. Let's improve on everything, subhanallah. Let's improve on the way we speak. Cut out the swear words for the sake of Allah. There are two challenges that you might find. One is the challenge of Allah. And the other is the challenge of those who are calling you to go away from Allah. Which one do you want? Are you going to follow a challenge that's going to distance you from Allah? Yet people might cheer you on. Or are you going to follow a challenge that you know and Allah knows brought you closer to Allah even if people don't know? I want to bring up the Tahajjud challenge. Are you going to take up the Tahajjud challenge to get up pre-dawn, pre-Fajr and read some, pray some prayer? Get up and pray to Allah at a time when Allah is calling out according to the hadith. He says at that time, anyone seeking forgiveness that I can forgive them. Anyone asking me for anything that I can give them. That's the challenge of Tahajjud. I challenge you and Allah has another challenge. May Allah grant us ease, my brothers and my sisters. The five daily prayers challenge. Are we ready to take that? The dress code challenge. Are you ready to dress in the way you know will please Allah? Even if the world thinks what you're doing is silly or is wrong or backward, you're doing it for Allah. Aren't these challenges supposed to be the challenges we take up? I challenge you to read a portion of the Quran every day. Subhanallah, Quran challenge. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Develop your character, your conduct, your connection with Allah and make sure you don't ever utter a bad word. Control your temper. That's a challenge. Don't ever get angry. Control your temper challenge. Subhanallah. People can try and work you up and you don't. What about the challenge of staying away from bad words? I've already said that, but here goes the no swear, no vulgar challenge. We're not saying don't have fun. You have fun, but have clean fun. My brothers, my sisters have fun by all means, but within limits of goodness, within limits of morality, you don't have to sin in order to please yourself. Not at all, because that is short lived. And wallahi, it comes up with a lot of baggage later on. You lose contentment. You have heartaches, heartbreaks. Why? Because you transgressed against Allah and you went against him wholesale. And you kept on following trends of people who couldn't even care less. They swear their mothers and fathers, uncles and aunts, and every other word is all about vulgarity and so on. Immorality. Everything is about sex. And that's what it's actually degenerated to. Hypersexualized. Every movement is only to flout what you have. Subhanallah. Is that what it's all about? No, my brothers, my sisters, we're believers. We're more noble than that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah open our doors. We want the Quran really to be a means of our entry into Jannah. The Quran is going to bear witness for you or against you. What do you want? May Allah make it easy for us. Like I said, sometimes there are religious people, people who are good, mashallah, people who are reasonable. They come from very good families. But if you see how silly the behavior is, they have forgotten that it's not all about pleasing people. That's what social media has done to us. It's made us make or it's made us want to please people more than we want to please Allah. If that is the case, and I hope it's not in the case of us, but if it is the case, then we're, we're losing the plot. What will happen? A time will come when people won't bother what Allah said. It will mean nothing. Why call yourself a believer? Why call yourself a Muslim? These are the days of reminders. We remind each other. The Prophet Sallam on the day of Arafah and the day of An-Nahar, the days of Hajj, the farewell, the farewell sermon, he spoke and he spoke about many important factors. And he told us, keep reminding, perhaps the one who is distant might get the reminder from one of you who is here. Convey the message. Let's spread it far and wide. What is the message? Learn to be responsible. My brothers and sisters, I pray that Allah grant us goodness and ease. Please enjoy your Eid. Allah has given you a day to rejoice, to rejoice the sacrifice and submission of the Prophet Ibrahim. True rejoicing will only happen when you are also prepared to sacrifice and submit 
when it comes to certain things that you know you're involved in, that you're not supposed to be involved in, certain things you know you're not doing, that you're supposed to be doing. And inshallah, in that way, we will definitely taste the new sweetness of these days of Eid that we've never tasted before. Just by your simply improving the way you dress, what you do on this day, don't transgress against Allah. Remember, you're going to go back to Allah. Take a good book with a lot of good things. Fill your book with so much of goodness that when you get to Allah and you see your book, you're so proud and smiling. Mashallah. We get so sad when we fail an exam in this world, whether it be university or high school, we become so sad and depressed when we fail. Trust me. The true depression and sadness and regret will be if we were to fail the exam when we see the results in the hereafter. For the hereafter, we would actually be at the ultimate loss. If we don't want that, here is the reminder to myself firstly to change my ways, to improve my ways and to become a better person and to be much more responsible when it comes to social media, when it comes to the use of our phones, what we watch, what we do, be it the applications or just the messages, our communications and so on. I end by telling you, let's put a knife to our bad habits. The pornography you've been hooked on, the immorality you've been hooked on. It's time to sacrifice it for the sake of Allah. For the sake of your hereafter, the adultery, cut it out. The intoxicants, cut them out. All of that that displeases Allah, cut it out. And you see how your life will change within a few days. If you're serious about it, that's my challenge. I promise you, you'll have the most beautifully content life. Don't ever try to please people in the displeasure of Allah. And don't ever, subhanAllah, do the wrong thing knowingly and stay on it even after someone's reminded you no matter how harsh that reminder sounded it was meant to get to your ears allah will ask you didn't we send someone to come and remind you and you know what the answer will be yes and the gatekeepers of hell will say well it's too late that's not going to be me and it's not going to be you because we're going to take heed barakallahu feekum may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true benefit of what is in the Quran and the Sunnah. And may Allah make us from those really who take heed, have a blessed, blessed Eid. And this Friday, remember, it is a double beauty. One is that of the Eid and the other is that of Jumu'ah and the Friday. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too. So please consider sharing and we will bring more videos in the future. Inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallahu khairan.